but the mic have didn't work so i just enabled that like a five <laughs> <to go. laughs> so it's fine it happens okay. sometimes but we have people join it's good hi everyone so hi everyone it's good um it's a boris and alex kara we're gonna talk about it and everything related to that um right questions in chat yeah so feel free to use the chat we are online in the youtube and um <laughs> That happens, that's technologies. Uh, so the mic didn't work, so we'll start again. Um, okay, so the topic today, we're gonna talk about importance of a quality assurance, about the testing and everything related to that. Boris is very good, my friend. Um, and um, he's he runs the software company, I fitness company, uh, Pumpex. And um, he has a career path, becoming a programmer, and, and starting his own company startup in California. So <clears throat> welcome, Boris. Thanks okay. for joining today, tonight. And Thanks for um, inviting. Definitely, definitely. I'm always you know, looking for interesting stories and inspiring people getting into the tech. Um, so we have uh, more friends uh, around us. And mm -hmm. good, uh, you know, helping good people is what, what I'm doing to get into the IT and make good money. And, Right, <laughs> so yeah, um, tell us a little more again. <laughs> what <laughs> something happened with the mic, so I have to I have to ask again. And I think we are shaking the table a little, so the camera oh, is okay. getting a little off. So let let's take it. <laughs> Come. Okay. Um, okay, so let's get started. Um, just tell us a little more about before opening, starting the starting the pump um, before becoming a programmer, what made you go in there? You said that accidentally, what did you mean by, you know? Yeah. So I got, uh, I accidentally got into the profession because, uh, initially I just wanted to be an engineer mm -hmm. related to electromagnetic stuff, okay. like some devices, like more on the hardware, mm -hmm. uh, part. But then my cousin, she got into the university and she got the, uh, she got into the faculty with computer science. And I realized that if I go to the same university, she might be helping me mm. during my study, like, because she, she's uh, older, one year older than me. So I realized mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it is a good opportunity. So that's how I got into the question. Before you actually, um, you know, even, thinking going to university the reason why you choose to study in the university programming mm -hmm. computer science was because of your cousin right yes uh -huh. so your career path started from university i guess and at the time at the university you were studying yeah programming at some yes i was grade. studying computer science applied math, math. Uh -huh. Uh, this kind of stuff, but I didn't really like uh, mathematics, physics. I didn't really like that because I think they were too complex for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the moment, and I started trying programming. I started with C language, mm -hmm. uh, and then I realized it's also too complex for me. <laughs> <laughs> same, same for me. I have a similar story. Uh huh. Yeah, and then I decided to try Java. And I realized, wow, Java is so much better. You really understand the code and it's so much easier because, uh, okay, I'll go a little bit more technical. There's a virtual machine that is cleaning memory for you. You don't have to mm -hmm. worry about pointers, anything like that. I don't know if somebody knows about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand. So Java know. was like, I realized, by starting using Java, I realized I like programming. I like it, that it's a very creative profession mm -hmm. because you basically decide uh, you decide how to implement the task, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's up to you. How so, you do. programming is a very creative uh, thing, but yes, right? yes, I think it's a very creative profession. So you kind of like um, like an artist uh, building something, right? Yes, yes, uh, and like also painter painting the, the, some pictures. You like uh, building them. Um, some architecture, yeah, yeah, like yeah. a building architecture or painting the, from scratch, everything. Right? Yeah, even if you take, uh, for example, mobile app, right? We, we're going to talk about mobile apps. No? So mobile app, 
is you also create it from scratch and you decide how it's going to be. You mm -hmm. decide mm -hmm. where the button go, what functionality going to be. It's up to you. And right. it's also very creative. Yeah. Same thing for testing when we build a framework for testing. Mm -hmm. It's also something you can do so many ways. And mm -hmm. ideally, you want to fit that framework, the exact project and needs for the mm -hmm. company. So it's perfectly working for that. Okay, so that's cool. I like. I I want to fix that. It, programming is very creative uh, thing that people are doing. Yes. So Definitely. a lot of a lot of people think about programming and coding. It's like for gigs. People who love mathematics and uh, always like have uh, a big bird. Actually, no. like you. <laughs> <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> Such a case. <laughs> but we don't have glasses. Normally, that yeah. traditional picture people with the glasses like. 10x glasses. Yeah, but in reality, it's not like that. Because, for example, myself, I don't like mathematics and I don't use it at all during mm -hmm. my job. Maybe mm -hmm. little, little bit, but I Google everything. Right. So almost all other work mm -hmm. is just creative. Right. Creative stuff. Okay, I'm just double check sometimes. Uh, so we have sure. many comments. Any any connection music? issues with the connections. No, everything is great. Uh, so far, so good. Let's move on. So um, let's get back to the story. So your career path started from university. My university wasn't that good. I also learned something old languages that I hated. And I was sure like maybe fourth year of university. I also did computer science, computer systems. I understood it's not my thing, definitely. I'm not like that person mm -hmm. who would be able to do the programming and coding. Same as you, right? Yes. Something happened like you were you were studying C. I was studying C plus plus. I was reading the book. Oh yeah. Yeah, C plus C++. plus plus. I was doing C. C++. So yeah. we have the same story, it seems same, like. Yeah. Um and uh, then you realize Java is is a relief, right? It's something that is different, way, way easier, smarter, better, and that was a game changer, right? Okay, cool. Okay, so, um, and now, after working certain years in the different companies, you somehow end up building the, the startup, mm -hmm. right? So, and um, that happens, that happened eventually after a certain amount of, for how many years did you, did you work as a? Yeah, so I worked, uh, almost like eight years, maybe. Eight years? Yeah, at 95 job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, and I, I understand like your skills allowed you to build that, um, you know, mobile app. And that was the reason why everything has started. And, and another reason you like, well, like you go to the gym and you couldn't yes. find the app, right? Yeah, yeah. So I can tell a little more about that. So, Basically, yeah, I always wanted to exit nine to five. That was my dream. And I'm working on that right now. And uh, how it started, I always also wanted to try mobile app because first reason is uh, doing mobile apps. You immediately go to the market. You develop something mm -hmm. and you go to the market right away. You publish an app store. People already can use it. People already can buy. Uh, you cannot uh, start money right away. Mm -hmm start getting money. Uh, so that's why I wanted to try mobile apps all the time. It's easier, yeah. It's easier to go to the market. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and I always like going to the gym. I, I think it's a very good activity. Um, and uh, I realized, okay, why not to use this, my passion in the gym and my passion in the programming, why, mm -hmm. why not combine them combine. together? Yeah, and it's perfect and create a company. And also, when I was going to the gym, I, I, I use these mobile apps mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. to track progress. Yeah. To track, to remember how, how much weight did I, did I do last time, and so on. And when I was using them, I realized they're so complex, they're not convenient. So you couldn't find the perfect one. Yes, so yes. You up opening, creating by yourself. If, if you guys, if you cannot find something great, become a, Programmer and build it by yourself. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly what works. Perfect. Okay, let's move on to the. We have like around an hour, but we can stay a little longer, I guess. Sure, we have yeah. a lot of 
like on a lot of like a, a list of things that to discuss. Mm -hmm. I want to move to a very cool topic: uh, QAs um, and developers. Okay. And uh, there are a lot of stories that at, at the beginning, when you getting into the becoming a tester, when I was getting into becoming a tester more than ten years ago. There were like a funny story about um, we were sitting in the in the in the kitchen in that uh, you know big building ten ten floors and the first one was a kitchen and there was uh, three programmers and I was the one QA uh -huh. and there was some they were joking about like hey there was like a new a new QA getting into the you know becoming a junior getting the junior position and he was so happy finding the first bug creating the first bug you know he was so happy <laughs> so you know enthusiastic and they were like oh my god so like how come we were like working so much building that you know platform or an app or a website and he's so so freaking you know like excited about his he, if you find a problem in, in something that they built three of them and i'm like sitting in front of them I have to defend. <laughs> I have to defend this uh, QA guy, you know, poor junior who just joined the company, probably, and they were like, you know, laughing about him. So, what do you think in general about um, psychological uh, point of view, QAs and developers um, mm -hmm. having a fight between each other, uh, resulting in a in a good application, or it could be a, a, a bad. <laughs> could be a good thing to fight from that. Okay, I know what you're asking about. So I can tell uh, about my experience, about my, my feeling. I don't know about any other developers mm -hmm. what they feel, but sometimes when it's like bug after bug report you, <laughs> you have to fix all of them. That's getting a little bit annoying. That's true, mm -hmm. but. I also realized how important that is because without QA, for example, um, on my older old projects, we didn't have uh, QA, mm -hmm. and uh, that amount of time that we spent to fix problems on on the production later on, it was greater. And uh, I wish there was a QA who was doing the bug reporting, mm -hmm. even, even if there were many bug reports, it still saves time later on. Sometimes students asking, why do we need QAs? Why developers cannot fix the bug? So what would be your fast answer? Okay, my fast answer, you don't have time for everything. You you concentrate on, on some task and you want it to complete and uh, you are too much into the code and once you complete, you kind of do a quick test mm -hmm. before pushing, and that's all. You want to you want to like concentrate on so something else. There's no time to yeah. To there's no time test to test. Yeah, there's no time to test. Uh, you also might uh, might not notice this small thing when the people from the side look at your code. Mm -hmm. They might test it from the other side. You know that you you did not. Right. Uh, um, you, you didn't expect. Mm -hmm. So everyone has own role. I mean, oh, yeah. developer may may be like super duper perfect that knows everything about QA for some reason and knows everything about that. But the, the the you know spending the same amount of time, like one person spend like eight hours a day testing and another person eight hours developing. That way, way works way, way better, right? So, mm -hmm. so that because you wouldn't be able to to do like eight and eight, you like have eight hours in total, right? So that that's how it works, and there is methodology yeah. is that. But it's not only about time. It's like as I said, like when you develop something, mm -hmm. you don't look at your code from this short from this version, angle, yeah, yeah, from this angle, and the QA comes and he knows already where Even to the look for, right? Yeah. Also, for example. I, I'm, uh, I'll bring my app as an example. For example, mm. I I create some feature, right? But then to test it, I I don't do like load testing when I create a lot of sets. Mm -hmm. and then I delete them. Okay. I think I want to leave that code alone and just like go to rest. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's yeah, something. But QA helps. 
Game K is something. It's, it's like really early for the, <laughs> early. for the company. Yeah, could be really. Okay, um, perfect. So, and before we get into this next topic, um, I wanted to double check because I don't, I don't think we answered my first question. My first question about actually like a competition, like not a fight, but competition, kind of like a, can it be healthy for the company when the QAs are having a kind of, even like some tension relationship, you know, between the developers and QAs. Uh, so QAs could be like, okay, we're gonna create uh, this, we're gonna make this, uh, you know, program perfect by finding all the bugs and reporting, 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 and cover all the negative scenarios, like all the, you know, craziest uh, scenarios ever. And then uh, for developer, it might be too much. So you have to, it could become like a conflict, right? So that would be probably like a bad thing, mm -hmm. right? But otherwise, when um, I get QA is um, someone who, you know, we, we call ourselves like a customer advocate. Have you heard about that phrase? Yes. Customer advocate, like uh, attorney for customers, mm -hmm. you know? For you, so you have an app, right? And we are attorneys for the customers mm -hmm. who are going to use your app, right? So that's what we do. And uh, we're fighting for that app. And when it's in a healthy way, I think that's the most... Uh, I think health, healthy competition. It has to be professional, right? It has to be professional, yeah. You don't have to make it personal. It should be mm -hmm. professional. It should be related uh, for the quality of the app. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you basically bring that quality by analyzing, by finding bugs. Right, right. So yeah, it has to be cool. professional. Perfect. Okay. How do you collaborate? At the time? So normally, how do you how do you collaborate with QAs as a um, as a de developer? So you work with a lot of QAs, including myself. We work in the same company as you um, some years ago. But how does collaboration, communication is happening? Because I, I think this, this video could be watched by uh, people who you know, have, no, have no idea about testing and QAs and development. And how do we collaborate? So from your end as a developer. So what do you think? Okay, so usually we use some tracking tools like Jira. Mm -hmm. uh, tracking, tracking tools to track the to track the work. That, track the yeah, that, yeah. yeah, and QA usually after they do the testing, mm -hmm. they do bug reporting, they create tickets mm -hmm. and assign it to developers, mm -hmm. and developers go look at the explanation if they understand everything. Mm -hmm. That's good. If not, they go back to right. QA asking mm -hmm. questions. So you just asking double checking yes. about bugs. So who in your term, in your opinion, who is the good QA engineer? What what you know, just from the practical, very practical point of view. You work with the QAs, you know who is a good guy, who's really trying you know his best, and who is like, okay, something like lazy, sometimes not doing okay, everything perfect. Mm -hmm. So what would be the you know, qualifications so. Okay. So well, in my opinion, good QA engineer is an engineer who first uh, can find bugs mm -hmm. that he tests thoroughly the system and mm -hmm. can find the imperfections, can find the bugs. And second, I really like when QA engineer do some preliminary analysis. Mm -hmm. For example, he found a bug, he sees something not working and uh, he, he can just report right away mm -hmm. or he can do a uh, preliminary analysis to like see what parameters are working what parameters are not working and and say or i noticed with these parameters mm -hmm. it's not working because this might go out, out of range or something like that like preliminary analysis that might help point uh, developers to the right direction it, it doesn't require a lot of time but mm -hmm. it's always appreciated so basically you're saying that there are two things, right? The, the very first thing I forgot, but the second one. <laughs> <laughs> By the first, uh, sorrow testing. Sorrow like test. Finding bugs. Okay, so many bugs is a good thing, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so the second thing is that I, I do agree with you 100%. So, best QA 
the best case scenario would tell you like, okay, so Boris, here's the line of code you have to fix. Mm -hmm. So instead of this, like instead of this variable, instead of this statement, you have to change it. So it's start, gonna start the book, right? But I don't expect them to go into the code. Like, but if they would be able to. <laughs> that would be perfect. If they fix maybe, it me, maybe they're going to fix it for you. Almost, almost fix it. it even more so close, as close to, to fix in the back yes. would be too perfect. So yes. I think a very important point here is to understand for the company, for the tech company, is a very, very important uh, skill is to have a quality assurance engineer as technical as possible. As technical as possible, because if you are technical enough to find the freaking line in the code that you know developer yeah, have to yeah. fix for a company, it's uh, it's uh, like it's it's everything. You know, if QA can do that, you know, if, if QA like super technical, they gonna they, they're ready to pay m more amount of money. They're ready to hire. That's why there are like manual QA and automation QA. So automation QA, we we need to to know Java or any other programming. Coding, so we are more technical, right? Companies yeah. willing to hire more technical people, that's for sure. and that's another reason that we discuss it because the technical person who knows coding, he can even find, uh, you know, some line and yes, at least gap. Okay, so this very well, but also after test, after test, after test, after test so yeah. cool because you basically and they they after test they catch bugs for you because once you set up everything mm -hmm. correctly. Every time you develop a feature, you go through those early yeah. set, set up tests, and they can catch bugs for you. So they're saving a Save lot of time. time. Yeah, saves time. My, and time is mine, right? Oh, for yeah. the company. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and money? <laughs> <laughs> money, money, money. Okay. So we basically, um, one additional thing I wanted to talk to you. So um, let's get back to your career path as a developer. Uh, I remember you even at the very beginning of that you know, this podcast, this interview. I remember you said about your cousin, and she told you that she she's she can help you, and she's already on the way to become a developer. So that was a good example for you, and you decided to go through university for this uh, special speciality is fine like six years for Thompson right five oh, years six years six yeah. years becoming a bachelor oh, and I, did you by any chance what do you think like instead of the six years how much really time do you need to become a developer at that point that you can get a job yeah in my opinion it's gonna be first of course it depends how much time you spend a day yeah but if you spend like um, eight know, four hours, hours. Well, <laughs> no, no, not eight, maybe four, three hours a day uh, on the working day, maybe doing one, the one year. Maybe doing, doing the coding, one year. I, I do agree. Coding. Becoming a developer, I agree, is like a four hours a day, every, you know, every day during the year you spend like after working hours um you have like a boot camp or a person who helping you then yeah it's possible i agree and around the one year but my question now is if you would know about existence of less technical but still coding uh automation quality assurance or just a qa quality assurance uh, profession what like the first of all did you know about the qa before getting that in the beginning of my career i yeah. didn't know when you talked to your cousin no i didn't know you didn't know so if you would know what this thing would that would that would would that be an option for you become and maybe a qa and then eventually go to the development um i think it's a good option to start because the the entrance of what entrance border the boundary yeah the entrance boundary into the profession is much lower for QA mm -hmm. because you don't need to, to have such a huge technical expertise uh, because for example if you go as a developer you need to learn algorithms mm -hmm. something you rarely use in your daily job but you have to learn them mm -hmm. so and it's taking a lot of time 
Uh, but when to QA, you don't really have to learn algorithms. So you're still going to have senior, basic, right? senior, senior level and yeah, more basic. Right? OK. So anyway, getting into the professional QA is easier. Mm -hmm. And I always thought like uh, that starting with QA, mm -hmm. you can always go and switch to software. Because yeah, oh, manager. Yeah. If you want to become a manager, a lot of people whom I know, uh, including myself, were moving from like QA to QA manager, and then just simply project manager, etc. Mm -hmm. Just because of the salary and growth in career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can stay in QA too. You can go like QA architect or something. Yeah, like yeah. Develop the whole QA architecture that is or, testing for a company. Because like for if, if that's a yeah. big company, they have a lot of projects, a lot of websites, a lot of mobile applications, and they would want to standardize, 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 mm -hmm. have the same standard for the entire organization. For example, I know, uh, and you, I think you also know mm -hmm. the guy, uh, Anton Chapin. Mm -hmm. So he's he has really good technical expertise, and I'm sure he would be a great developer, but mm -hmm. Anton, hi, <laughs> if you watch. So he uh -huh. he would be a great developer, but he actually stays in, in the QA and he's QA architect mm -hmm. and he's developing like full pipeline for the customer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and optimizing that. I saw what he's doing, like really great job. And yeah, he's staying at QA. Yeah, you it. can you can basically grow as a QA um you know very Definitely. having like you have to you have like a career. If you have the right company who allows you to grow as much as possible, staying within a QA department, it's possible. It all depends on the company. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, move on. I think the point here is uh, QA is a great choice for those who have no probably background and thinking getting into IT. Getting into IT, uh, the most easiest path I think is mm -hmm. to start with QA. Okay. So <clears throat> let's see the other topic. Um, hmm. Oh, have you heard about Square? What happened last week? Square is the app. My wife yeah, actually. It down. Yeah, it actually happened. Like uh, I, I was looking at my wife, and she's like, "Oh my God, Alex, what's happening? This app is not working. The girls cannot, you know, How get the client. Get payments? Yeah, yeah, they cannot. They, they couldn't get payments. They couldn't get bookings." The booking because this is the app. It's, it's a perfect app because it, that's one. There are two apps. I think Soft, they have Soft, right? something yeah. different. One. Big, big girl. Something I don't remember exact name, but there are only two apps, and the Square is a leader on the market. So everyone were you know using the Square, and whole state. I, I, I think it's only here in the United States people using the Square. The you know small business and, and it went down for like almost twenty four hours. Oh. And when this really? happens, like in a company, it's like got, somebody got fired. Yeah, somebody <laughs> could get fired. Somebody uh, can lose a lot of money. Somebody can get sued because the when when we're talking about the company between company, mm -hmm. because the Square is a big company, and my wife runs the, her company as well. But there are also many other companies. Like mm -hmm. there could be a company. Uh, even like a beauty beauty company who would own like hundreds of different locations, making like millions of billions of dollars, you know. And imagine that. how big is the impact for them for one day. That could be like a huge amount of yeah, um, yeah huge amount. And then they have to deal. But you know what they um, but no, they they did send uh, a uh, push notification that she is gonna have. Um, like a, some amount of time having the cash out um, the money without a commission. Ah, like an excuse? Like, like, a, like we, sorry. We, yeah, we're sorry for what happened, technical difficulties, so we're gonna cover your commission for this amount of time. But, you know, for her, thank God, it was just a 24 hours, she didn't lose any money as far as I know, and she didn't lose any clients. Mm -hmm. But the company is good, the other companies who have like a lot of location. And then it could be like a you know court process happening, doing what the square and square has a lot of money for sure. They they, they but they would also have a good 
what the tournament is. Anyway. <laughs> so it could be a big fight, right? And that happens everywhere. In the company where I have worked in CoreLogic a long time ago, these guys are very big. They work with a bank. The clients is Bank of America, Wells Fargo, this Freddie Mae, and all other you know big big companies that produce mortgages and loans mm -hmm. and student loans and any other kind of car loans. And the government is super regulating them, and they have to adjust their uh, you know their platform every single time according to some new you know government law or stuff mm -hmm. like that. And when something goes wrong, I think that's you. Uh, they have problems. And all the IT department is like have to test everything so you know well. Mm -hmm. So we were spending a lot of time testing. We were making sure everything, every single thing is perfect. Mm -hmm. Because if something goes wrong, I think in banking as well. Yeah, <laughs> that that's because of it's all it's a it's a it's a Fin, right now, fintech. fintech company it used to be like just a bank, you know. Right now, it's tech because all the banks right now, software company, yes. fintech. <laughs> it used to be just a bank, right? Now it's a fintech. They call it, right? They <laughs> software companies. Um, all banks are like that. Yeah, yeah, like they all have mobile apps. Their own IT oh. departments. And so they don't like. Uh, usually, they have their own employees who are doing that I software. Think in you should disagree because yeah. imagine like somebody created a call. I, I heard about somebody created a mm -hmm. malware that is getting like a small small amount of money from every transaction. <laughs> <laughs> like one one hundred. Maybe some developer did that. I think so, yeah. So they did that and they started collecting those small, small, small amount of money so that customers yeah, won't no, right. note it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they collected like you several can. millions at the know. end, but then somebody found out about it. But we never Maybe know. It's okay. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Maybe Anton Shannon. <laughs> Maybe. But we never know how many successful kids because nobody oh. found out, you know? Okay. Okay. I always think about it. Yeah, <laughs> that's perfect. But the point is that the banks, they even have a higher salary. I heard about, you know, I never, no, I had a project with Union Bank. US, US bank, it was US bank. I worked there like for a month because it was one of the project and I didn't I wasn't hired directly with this bank, but I was helping to build the you know framework, the automation for them. They have a super complicated software because there are so many combinations of the way of getting a loan and that that loan gonna be approved or not? They're underwriter. You know, heard about this underwriting process? Yeah, yeah. It's like when they verify and making sure that the applicant is good enough to get approved oh, for the loan. So that process is usually the banks are out of control. They have like either they certain hundred percent that it's not approved or hundred percent that approved. If the score is excellent, or it's not. Approved. Mm -hmm. Excellent. However, if that's somewhere in the middle, always like a you know some some craziness happening <laughs> in that case because you know there are so many um, things have to be considered. So banks is a perfect also to get started, and um, companies are really into you know hiring a good QA so QAs in general so that they don't lose their money, right, and don't get sued losing more money. Um, uh, so there is there are, there are another topic I wanted to talk with you is basically um, is can there is a thing that exists you know we call it a feedback like a company gets a continuous feedback about their health or about their quality of their product. Have you heard about like a, a phrase? continuous feedback about their you no know? so basically <clears throat> ideal testing in my opinion is the is the is the system that is built by and, and designed in a way that all people IT all the IT department including the managers understand the health of their mobile app or website or you know, platform like this, very fast. 
you maybe like run scope or you know some health you know there's some health um, monitor or something like that when for any application for backend for example oh like uh, if it's healthy it's yeah if all the all, all all the oldest uh, endpoints are up up and running like swagger yeah not the swagger but let the, it doesn't okay. that doesn't matter about the name of the okay. application but the point is that ideal uh, in ideal world um you know that that would be great to have some solution that would be momentarily provide a feedback to everyone in the team so everyone understands that okay so we have per everything is perfect mm -hmm. after this change after we added additional payment method to the system still everything is perfect right um, um so if that's perfect let's add something more mm -hmm. let's add something more something bigger and the more big impact we do and change to this um application mm -hmm. mobile application or any any website then a bigger risk to reduce that risk we want to have a fast feedback so um i think this conversation would be ideal with another qa <laughs> But, <laughs> say here, say here. but uh, maybe in your complex, so you have any, you don't have any, right? Yeah, so far. Yeah, any, any kind of like a monitor where you would make sure. Idea. I should maybe buy a QA engine. We already given you some interns from spin, spin, uh, spin career. So you need more? If you need I more, need always more. come to more. Okay, okay, guys. So yeah, then it's, we, are, we, we have we have like um, you know a few openings for for, yeah. for the start. We are so reach really, out to us if, if you guys interested in getting more experience. We are adding uh, several big features mm -hmm. pretty soon. First, mm -hmm. first feature that we are working on is friends feature. Friends, because it's a free marketing for the app. When you start adding other mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. like your friends, mm -hmm. and friends are joining, and in our case, it's like uh, we want friends to compete on every exercise I see. on one rep max you can see top chart mm -hmm. between your friends That's like right. for example me and you are doing bench press mm -hmm. and you did like 10 times 120 pounds okay. and i did 10 times 150 pounds you are getting motivated that mm -hmm. you want to lead like me mm -hmm. so it's not only free marketing but also motivation motivation for people who want to yeah be better than friends yes <laughs> the best one <laughs> So yeah. this is the biggest feature right now that we're working on, and definitely we will need to create to okay. test it because uh, the bigger feature, the more problems might come, more bugs might come okay. with the release. So we want QA uh, to be testing for us as well. So Pop, what was the biggest bug you could remember that being found uh, in, in the, the application? Question. If you remember it, that's yeah. Uh, you you sent in some you you shared some screenshot about your customer recently. Did yeah, you find something. So recently there was a I wouldn't say it was a bug. The web server that we had huh. it went down because out of memory. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that we have like uh, users like that. They send me a message by email. Give me a feedback. Yeah, they so gave me feedback, feedback right away. So you don't need that system. You have people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. Two, two guys, they sent me a message in, in email. I, I woke up, I, I checked my uh, my mail mm -hmm. on my phone, and I see like the guy is telling me, oh, the app is not working. Mm -hmm. And, I'm and like, he probably is doing his exercise. Yes, right I think so. Yeah. yeah. So I went and I, I, I started up the web server. Uh, yeah, and I sent him a message. I, I I told him thank you so much for letting okay. me know. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. But that's a very bad example. Uh, in, as a QA um, engineer, yeah, like QA, I can yeah. I can tell you that it's a very bad. That that's exactly why the company hires QAs. So the situation doesn't like this doesn't happen when the customer is reaching out to the company and saying, "Hey, you guys have a very bad app. It's not working." And then one star in your Situation, you're lucky. This this guy is yeah, you know, lucky. more people like that in our world. You know, ha yeah. helping that software yeah. become better software. Then 
living in one store. So guys, if you uh, see the app, your favorite app or website isn't working in a way you expect, yeah. Ideal case situation, just reach out to their support, like, uh, for example, um, you know, support email or through their, you know, better in the emails. Contacts. Yeah, just reach out to them, leave uh, like a feedback to them instead of like giving them one star because for, you know, that, yeah. that's like, a, that's not, not a good thing. So also, uh, I want to tell, like, for example, in case of this bug, right? The QA is not only about like catching front end bugs. There are some QAs that are, that are doing performance testing. Yeah. And if they were doing performance testing for the app, for the mm -hmm. for the web server, uh, I would catch that bug. Yeah, okay. yeah. 100 yes. It's um, called uh, performance testing, yeah. It's, yeah. it's uh, there are different ways to, we, we also teach it in, in our bootcamp and spin career, performance load testing. Um, so it's, it's, it's a very also important topics, but, uh, more popular, it's a, the most popular right, right now is the web testing than, uh, mobile web testing, web testing. Oh, like web, web, you know, Google web. Chrome or different browsers and then, uh, mobile testing, uh, then backend testing and then performance tests. Mm. It's also very, you know, important for the companies, all the com all the big companies, they have low performance or different yeah. guy, kind types of testing like that so that they can scale. Because if they if the company is planning to 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 do the advertisement mm -hmm. for the maybe for some so doing some promotion, they may expect a huge load new customers. Oh. Yeah. And they're like they have a monitor where you can see how many uh, how many customers they have during the day, an average uh, during an hour, etc. And when they're doing the promotion, they know ahead of time that it would be a, like you said, spike. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's like a cardiogram in your for your for your heart, right? It's like this normally, and then if it's spike, they're expecting something big. And they trying to predict. Uh, they provide the requirements, of what they expecting to ask the QAs, and we kind of uh, doing the same spikes on uh, for the application. But instead of like a version that everyone is, you know, has access, we have a copy of that, and we are, you know, doing our testing, mm -hmm. making sure that the spike gonna not gonna, you know, break the the whole system down. So. <clears throat> So let, let's uh, talk about the future of the fitness. Mm -hmm. So you chose that uh, fitness industry uh, and software, fitness, mobile application. How how do you see the the future of this uh, fitness? How you know maybe not tomorrow, not not in a year, but in general in the future. What what is your guess? Maybe from even from movies, you know, like you can. The people nowadays sometimes don't go outside of their house just mm -hmm. running on that machine. I don't know the name, mm -hmm. but they just doing that at home. I see in the gyms they have their monitors like a gamification, mm -hmm. virtual reality. It's, by the way, virtual reality is, is a something that is uh, could be related to to that. So <clears throat> because. You, you have seen, you have this Oculus stuff at home, right? You do, uh -huh. you do. And then I have, I had an app that you enable and then they kind of calculated how many calories you, you burnt by just guessing based on the movement or something. But anyway, so what are your ideas about the future for the fitness uh, for people? Yeah. So I think uh, the future is going to be with wearable devices because they yeah <laughs> like this one because they're keeping they keep getting better and better okay and also in the gym you don't want to the whole idea of Funpex was to simplify the logic because mm -hmm. uh i didn't want to open my phone all the time i didn't want to mm -hmm. i want to concentrate on my workout and just look when when i do something when, mm -hmm. when i increase um so Wearable devices also help in, in that in that regard because they uh, they are right at your hand mm -hmm. and you don't have, you don't spend much time of opening the mobile phone going somewhere. Mm -hmm. You just go here and for example, 
a couple of days ago, maybe yesterday, Apple released their yeah. update when you can control with one hand. Mm -hmm. Remember? I, I, yeah, I, yeah. You, I have I, that in a list to discuss today, but <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, so you basically can control your uh, watch with one hand. So it's also super convenient uh, for the gym because you go, you do something you did like that, and you track your set, for example. Mm. And that is very convenient, and uh, I'm sure there are going to be more features like that. Another very variable much. device could be a glove. Like in the movies, the zero zero seven agent. Like yeah, you can, can like, but you might look weird. Maybe. But the, the technology is getting better. So instead of VR, you, you might gonna get a link chip here. Not a chip. And it translate right into. So let's talk about the chips later. <laughs> that, that's gonna be our last topic about craziness happening in technologies. But um, very good variable devices are not that crazy, right? So you wear some things, some device, and um, but it's we're getting your about data. Near future, right? Or are you talking about like one hundred years? Doesn't future. matter. Doesn't matter. It's hard. It's harder to guess what's gonna happen in. in I think one hundred years into the future, fitness industry. I think there should be some kind of, I don't know, special healthy medicine uh -huh. that you take. Medicine. Medicine. I think medicine is gonna like be. mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> no, not like mushroom. Maybe like in the way. like a pill. You mm. drink that pill, and your performance is and it's completely safe. Okay. And you basically achieve super results in short. I know right now there are some drugs like that, but they're not safe for your health. <laughs> we don't recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't recommend that. <laughs> so they're not safe. Okay. And that is the problem. That's a problem, but you would you would take it if if they would be approved by this FDA. <laughs> yeah, agent. yeah, why not? It's healthy. Why not? Yeah. So that, but I think in my opinion, when you actually going to the gym or going to do the surfing volleyball, like I usually do, uh, besides uh, having the result of having a better body, bigger muscles, and healthier organism. Mm -hmm. You also uh, build in some other skills like <clears throat> consistency, like um, being organized and disciplined. I think this, yes, but mo more important is mental health because when you go to the gym, You're right. when you go to the gym, you, you stress basically in the gym uh -huh. doing the weight. Oh. You are stretching your organ and your organ is. Your body getting releasing used. hormones, releasing stress hormones, and your body is getting used to that. So that when you have like a real stressful situation on your work, for example, you are already prepared. You that should be a logo. Much. That should be a logo. Uh, release your hormones and uh, note them down. It sounds like that. So and measure you and measure them or measure the data. That would be perfect. All these words. <laughs> Uh, but the point is, everything is measurable. I think at some point we're going to measure the hormones. Why not? How many hormones been released after this exercise? Is it better for making making your psychological life uh, doing the lifting or doing the push ups and you now you now feel stressed? So instead of going to the to talk to you know maybe professional uh, who who has uh, very expensive prices, you know, I mean, psych psych therapist, psychologist, mm -hmm. then you can uh, temporarily go to the gym and feel better. I right think so, it. yeah. Right I, mean, I want to give an advice to our viewers. That if you guys feel stressed, try try doing uh, exercise, try go going to the gym, try some sport, and it really helps. I, I can tell for sure because, um, yeah, like, Going to, to the job nine to five is, is getting really stressful when you yeah. don't switch your internet to something else. So mm -hmm. You have to like switch the, the so how would you do that if you have the pills, right? So you have to go out do something. That's a decent match. But still the future could be very surprising. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know. Yeah, but it's a good point about I like that idea about hormones and mm -hmm. how we can digitized, you know, that, uh, that, that 
releasing of some endorphins and all other kind of hormones. Oh, we can adrenaline. Nice. Adrenaline. That will be perfect. We can track like your body fluids, your hormones mm. with a wearable device. I hear the new startup guy. Yeah, and then <laughs> you inject inject, for example, oh you have a low testosterone. Into your it's right. It's oh, you feel sad. It injects like alcohol. Alcohol. Yeah. For example. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's move to the next topic. Um, Apple feature. So I think we already started talking about that. So that release for that, you know, for the iPhone 15. I haven't mm -hmm. seen the iPhone, but that thing went out. It's it's um you know we, we are making a lot of jokes talking about uh, you know having those pills injections uh, automatically, but <laughs> guys, how they can make that event by how they could understand that I did this without camera by just uh, simply the watch. But they have a special sensor that is. So sensors getting better every single day. The batteries on the on the on the on the ceiling, on the ceiling, right? On the roof. Yeah. On the roof. Are getting better and better. Every single year there is a new version. Even months can be a new version. So all the I, I remember I remember I had a friend who was thinking about doing the startup like long years, long, long time ago. And his startup was about um, having a tra tracking your keys. So you would wear some some like plastic tag to your keys, and then if that got lost, okay. you, can, you can locate. Nowadays, it's everywhere. But he couldn't make that happen. He started from the life because the battery wasn't strong enough for the GPS. GPS because uh -huh. this tracker has a GPS in the battery, and then when the battery dies, you simply throw it out and buy a new one. So nowadays, it's possible. At that time, it wasn't possible. So right now, for technologies, the companies are looking into the new possibilities. Like tomorrow, it could be um, something crazy with AI. Right? We, we didn't talk about AI. So let's move slightly to the creation that's happening with that AI, with the government trying to control big tech companies or those who are becoming like tremendous, huge company. So that, you know, you watch that um, show, have you watched the show, Netflix um, Black Mirror? Uh -huh. So they show in a lot of examples about craziness that may happen if the government is not is out of control or not controlling enough that company and technologies. So with that AI thing going on, I have <laughs> I have students like asking me about their job eventually in the future. Because when you are in a way of becoming an IT specialist, you're like thinking maybe I shouldn't go there because it's gonna be like done by robots, AI, and I. So same for developers, I think people who want to become developers of QA or anyone in IT, they kind of worry. Not, not that much for it, but people started thinking about it at least. So let's talk about what do you think about that first of all? Eventually, like after yeah, five, five years. I now. had one guy, he asked me, can you do a mobile app for me? Uh, I'm doing the uh, car rental uh -huh. company, and he asked me. Uh, I, I I told him, yeah, yeah, yeah we can. Like uh, this is the price. Yeah, this is the price that might be. And he told me, oh, I can do it on ChatGPT. Why should I like pay. bother? Why should I pay? Yeah, and I can do it with AI. I told him it's not how it works. Because <laughs> <laughs> so people, it's people are like crazy it. thinking like that you can create everything. Yeah, yeah. It, maybe in the future it might be possible, but not at this time. Right now, it's like um, it's like if you open the Google Trends, you know, Google Trends, they they would show you the popularity of some keyword, of some words. So AI is like the Chat GPT AI is like. It's like a spike right now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people talking about AI and some people getting worried, some, some 
people getting excited and uh, all the companies are trying to implement some AI to mm -hmm. their like existing ecosystem organization. And uh, I think it's uh, it's getting we're we getting to some point with it that we were because I, I think even more than 10 years ago, no, around the 10 years. Yeah, before I became an IT specialist, I heard about some AI. But for me, it was so long time ago. Like I, I heard some some guys working, mm -hmm. you know, somebody friend of the friend of the friend working about uh, on, on AI idea. Some for me, I, I had an idea like it it could be like a smart robot that could uh, be like a real human. That's what I was thinking about AI. Mm -hmm. So nowadays, you already have an example of the chat GPT that works way better than Google, showing you like answers or can create a new text or write a simple code, right? Which is already like a lot of things. You can try for free now, right? So that's, that's something you can feel, right? It's something you can implement in your fitness. Now. Have you, um, did you start implementing something like that? Right? Uh, we're thinking how we can apply AI. You see, you, you think as well. Yeah. Same thing. I also think about the spin career and how I can uh, help the students get their results faster, get their job faster, having that AI work for them, for, 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 for the application. But now, guys, let me answer that question about, um, but the question is like the future of uh, QA, for example, or development, if they're going to be AI. So practical point, very simple, guys. So I, we, we have, let's say, PumpX, right? The PumpX is already, uh, you know, startup. They have, you guys have application with lots of features. Functionality, you can track things, you can, um, you know, do a lot of a lot of functionality you know and and, and subscribe for some uh, bloggers who are doing exercises mm -hmm. and they're going to be a lot a lot more yeah, i'm pretty sure so <clears throat> all that features they take in time to develop they take in time to task every time you do some add some new functionality all functionality can you know can break and then uh it's a lot of work it's a lot of work it's not like you create a that GPT, like, right, please create a mobile application. It's a lot of work. So years of work, uh, especially if you calculate, like, a teamwork, right? Not just you, but other people who are involved in that, right? And then now we are talking about adding AI to the to the uh, fitness app. So by doing that, it's another functionality. We're adding that functionality to the mobile application. Do you think that every every including that AI has to be tested, still tested, right? Nobody like AI wouldn't, would not be able to test it for you, for you. However, like I already see, I did the research recently. There are some companies who, um, you know, that what they do, they um, inject certain kind of code in their website or mobile application. So that code, is reading what the customers are doing on, on the on the mobile app or website. So they have a learning machine, and that machine is learning all the scenarios, learning scenarios and showing you top hundred scenarios first of all based on the data. So that um, data being analyzed somehow, and the scenarios showing you. Okay, so they're like during the last month there were like million of users on the on the website and then 50% or like 20% of the users did the same freaking scenario. So this scenario is a very popular. So if you don't have a test, oh. test for that, you must do that. Based on the popularity of the scenarios, they build in their like uh, potential most popular steps. And then you kind of have a list of scenarios for yourself, so you don't have to create that scenario. So it helps us; it helps saves time for us. The um, application become better, higher quality, right? Customers getting better results for us as for QA. 
does it mean they're gonna replace us? No, no, for sure. We're gonna be uh, maybe eventually less jobs on the market for this specific, um, maybe for, for QA, but they're gonna be more jobs for AI QA, right? Or for, because AI has to be tested. So it's not, not, you cannot like give the smart chat to your yeah. Pumpix, right? Not you have to be tested before you actually allow your customers to ask some questions in AI. So it doesn't get mad, you know, don't answer some crazy, don't give some crazy answers and stuff like that. But uh, <clears throat> what do you think about the government controlling all that thing? What can be go wrong? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> so, Everything, you yeah. mean, if government controls the AI, I don't like when government controls. I don't like when government starts giving more limits to something. I want government to allow, yeah. allow more, yeah. not to limit. But then happens Black Mirror. You guys, if you haven't watched that show, Black Mirror is about technologies and uh, craziness happening. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think the more competition, the more, uh, the more opportunities, the more. Uh, the more new good things gonna come into the world if uh, government are going to allow more, not limit more. That's my. That's so my your answer. your vision is allowing more, right? And yeah. And then that okay. So how would what what are your ideas about overseeing some bad um, situations, bad things that may happen eventually? Uh, yeah, there are some startups, for example. I heard about one startup in Silicon Valley. They're doing, uh, they're analyzing AI art, mm -hmm. and they are saying if it's a human created art mm -hmm. or if it's an AI created art, mm -hmm. and they can they can do this. So I think the market will start balancing itself. So, so it's all fiction, all like um, in yeah. the Black Mirror. They not gonna get any anything like that. Um, Even though the uh, government would not restrict anything. Uh, what uh, exactly are you talking about? What so, here? for example, uh, one of the when one of the CV and the show was about um, um, about some kind of uh, technology that allows you to see the ratings. social ratings for every person. Yeah. And then you're walking out on the street, and you can see how many likes or how many followers the person has without the phone. Okay. And then that works in a way that you kind of have that uh, rating, like a, not a credit score, but it's kind of rating. So if you have a lower rating, yeah. then you'll not be able to get a better car. Um, so yeah. they kind of make... I can, I can answer. So um, as long as it, you are not obligated to use this system, it should be okay. For somebody, maybe they can work, they can use it, you know? I don't want to... Tell people you're not allowed to use something. Okay. I want people to so use you more about the freedom. Want. We are not at that point when we have to think about the government. Yeah, I'm, I'm about understand. freedom. I think everybody should be allowed. Okay, okay, that's perfect. Okay, guys, uh, I think we covered all the topics from my list. Do you, you want to discuss anything else before we start the start the stream? Um, Okay, then uh, we're good. yeah, we're good. I think uh, people can rewatch the recording um, in the YouTube. And thanks, yeah. Boris, for sure. Thank you know you. great conversation. I'm pretty sure we're gonna you know thanks for have having more. And uh, definitely at this point and in the future, the the start startup gonna become bigger and uh, you're gonna have yeah. bigger challenges. There's gonna be a lot more topics to discuss and uh, hope you're gonna you're not gonna have any uh bugs that gonna yeah. eventually impact your customers so you. have a better quality and um good luck with, with the startup thank you so much thanks bye